Hey guys, okay. We're gonna be doing a baby belt build video. So most baby belt kits you get the printed parts and a hardware kit. So this is gonna be broken up in a couple sections. The first section is gonna be what you need to do this video, what you need to do to get it ready and uh, prep and everything else. And the second video is going to be assembling the base, the third video is going to be assembling the gantry, and the fourth video is going to be software and um, software and programming. Alrighty, or wiring too. Alright, so first thing we need to do. Let's talk about what's in the kit. So you have the control board, hot end, the roller, and the belt, and all the other fun goodies in here. Um, the thing I like to do first is get the motors ready. And so there's guys all over the internet on how to do this. So I'm just going to do one, pause the video, and then come back and do the rest of them. But if you pop the cover off here, And then you slice the center trace right here. And you cut the red wire. Slap this back on. What I like to do is instead of replacing the connector all together, I just cut off the fifth wire terminal because we're converting it from unipolar to bipolar. And then we can just pop out these wires here. There's a little terminal here. And again, this is all covered online by other people that did a really good job on this, such as Paul Chase's build videos of the original baby belt. Um, and there's a good guide by, uh, um, Adafruit as well on how to do this. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. So let's go blue, yellow, orange, pink is the right order. I leave the blue wire in so I don't have to mess with it again. Any little tabs back up again to the grab. Blue. Hello. I'm sorry about the production quality of this. I'm doing my best, but I have a bird in the background and the AC going and stuff like that, so. Anyways, once we get all of these done, I'm only going to do one right now, like I said, because all we need to do for the extruder to get the base done. Because that one's done. Alright, so the extruder gear needs to be as far down on the motor shaft as possible, and that means that you don't want to put the hobbed gear, uh, the, the set screw, on the flat part. You want to set it actually on the rounded part of the shaft. So I'm going to get the Allen keys out. And this is going to be a, if I'm not mistaken, a 2 millimeter, or a one point, actually a 1.5. Of course I don't have here right now, I'll be right back. Uh, 
All right, there we go. So the set screw's here. You can see the motor shaft is in line with the set screw. That's all happy. All right, now we get the fun part, the 3D printed parts. So, assembling the base part, we need the board mounted board. The um, left hand side with the worm gear. Now for those that are not getting the kit, that's 608 with 608. Slot side goes in there. Hole assembly just slides in. You may need to trim this hole here a little bit with a ridge reamer um, deburring tool but it should spin freely and nicely when you're done. So take the motor we just did, take it through here, grab some 10 mil screws, stick it through, secure it with some nuts, Your body here. Oops, put on the right. Oh yes, we should put the uh, new uh, PTFE coupler in. This just gets finger tightened. No need to he-man it. That fits on right there. And then you take your your arm here. Clean up the supports on it. Again, a deburring tool would be useful here. Mine's in the other room. Just clean up enough that you can slide your 608 on. I'm doing this kind of fast for the yeah, go don't get too bored. There we go. So that take 20 millimeter screws. through. Nuts. You guys get the idea. I don't need to put that one in for you right now because it'll take a while. Um, then this one here, I'm going to clean out this little hole in here. This guy slides in here. There. 20 millimeter goes all the way through. Yeah, so there's that. And then the extruder. Needs a second bearing here to counteract the clamping forces that the filament makes so that we don't break the shaft. It just basically lengthens the life of this motor and prevents people from cranking it down so tight that they break the motor shaft right off. And there's a washer coming for those. The current 9.5 kits don't have that. The 9.6 kits, it's been designed, but it hasn't been put in the kits yet. Um, so it will be. Now, Otter's Danger Dan, Shane found that sometimes there's a little bit of elephant footing right in here. So you just want to make sure that's clear. You, I'd recommend using a file for it, but there's that. All right, take your control board. Make 
again, I'm doing this for the sake of expediency. I'm going to come back and finish all this. There should be screws going through here. And 10 mil screw in here, which helps reinforce the plastic and keeping it from creeping over time. So on the control board, I'm going to put jumpers on the X, Y, and Z diag. That will enable sensorless homing so that we don't have to worry about end stops. If you don't put those jumpers on, sensorless homing will not work. And your printer will never home. Just go ahead and install it in the control board here. These are M10 screws that we're putting in. And again, for expediency's sake, I'm only going to put a couple in because I'm not planning on doing lots of editing on this video. But So these just tap right into the plastic. And you can use an M3 tap if you want, but it's optional. Okay, so now I can take the zip ties, and this is all keyed, so you can only go in one way. I'm just gonna zip tie it all together. It's a little floppy, wiggly woggly at this point, but when we get the sides on and everything else, that'll be much better. <laughs> Again, this is a 9.5 kit. There are some changes planned in between this kit and the next kit, and I plan on making a, uh, or version, I should say, not kit. Um, I plan on making a change guide available online, so you can easily see what parts change with each version. So if you want to change or upgrade, um, you can see exactly what parts need to be done. So I'm just, I know it's Hard to see what I'm doing here, but just feeding it through the edges around the part and then just tying it down. If you're following along with your own kit, it's pretty straightforward. Take the back piece here. And one of the changes we're talking about for the back piece was to make it so that it uses two zip ties instead of one to hold this together. Now the uh, front um, scraper should not be put on yet because we need to do the rollers now. We can trim up all these tails. So the rollers. After a lot of questions on how these rollers go together. Show you. 
first things first, clean any stuff out of the holes in the roller so they go in nicely. It's most important on the worm gear gear and the nut cap to get all the stuff out. So the way it goes is it goes bolt head through here. Go 608, and normal cap, and the pipe, then the nut cap, and the nut, had a lot of questions about why this is designed this way. And it's designed so that if you don't tighten this enough, the uh, cap will uh, um, cause the nut to tighten. So you can use just a normal pair of pliers for here. You don't have to use this silly tool. Just make sure you get it nice and tight so that the uh, but not super tight, but just tight enough that the pipe won't turn. 608. Another nut. And that roller's done. The other roller is even easier. It just goes bearing, cap, pipe. Cap, bearing, nut. Again, this doesn't need to be super tight or anything. All right, the belt. The belt is a construction of construction paper, carpet tape, and cloth fabric. This may change down the road, but for now, this is the way it is. Um, the tail here, obviously, should feed this way so that it won't catch on the scraper. So you just stick a roller through here. Actually, I actually like to put the head facing the other way. There you go. It just goes in. And this guy, obviously, the gear meshes with the worm. So it like that. And this slides in here. And this slides in here. Just like that. And then, oh, I may have over tightened this slightly. Again, this idle roller here does not need to be super tight. Should be able to turn freely. Now we tension this with four zip ties, two of which you just use for the little clicky mechanism. You cut the tails off. So the way it goes is you can feed either way. I like doing it this way because it's a little easier to tension in the future. Because the belt will need to be tightened every once in a while until it's worn in. I know my hands are blocking right now, but there you go, just like that. And here. Oops, I did that backwards. <laughs> Take it and 
prefer using a pair of pliers here, which we'll do later. But just getting a nice baseline on it. All right, and then the motor. Another motor goes in there. Oh, we can put this on now because I don't have the motor ready. But it just literally the motor shaft goes in there and then two screws hold it in place like that. I like to put the motor wire in through that little hole right there. Keep everything nice and tidy. We can put the uh, scraper on now. If you're going to leave all the tails on, this is one tail I'd recommend cutting as this one here. So otherwise, it'll make a horrible racket in this worm gear here. And the printer won't seem very nice. Now, as a note, some of the old versions of this printer came with a curved gear here. Notice how this is straight cut? You want the straight cut one, otherwise it may bind on the worm gear. And it can't hurt to put a little bit of grease either lithium or axle grease or something on this gear here to help it move nicer. So, there you go. There's the first part of the build.